Welcome to the Faithful Devotions this morning. It is a pleasure to have you here. A great shout out for all those who are joining us so early in the morning. Um, it's definitely an amazing day. And um, during this week, we're going to be learning about 1 Corinthians, the letter that Paul wrote uh, to the church in the current city. Um, let's pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for, for what you're going to teach us this time, Lord. I pray, God, that our hearts will be open, God, that we, that our minds will be renewed, Lord, and we accept the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for this time together, God. We praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name, and everyone says, Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on regards of the city of Corinth. Um, the city was located close to Athens. It was a port city, so a lot of uh, people came in and out of the city. Uh, people fr from different countries, mostly from Roma, Italy, Africa, and um, to cater to the needs of the people, their own people, and also their visitors, the city had many temples for the many gods. The, one of the temples was the temple of Aphrodite, which was the goddess of love, or in other words, the goddess of sex. The priests of this temple were prostitutes, were women who will come into the city at nighttime and will sell their bodies, and they brought this money to the high priest of the temple, and that was the way they worshiped their goddess. So it was a city where um, the major characteristics of the city was money, drunkenness, and immorality. Um, Paul spent 18 months in the city of Corinth, um, and you can read about this in Acts uh, chapter 18. Some, some scholars believe that this letter uh, was uh, written by Paul in the city of Ephesus. He heard of what was happening in the church of Corinth and he sent this letter dealing with five main issues of the church. The first one is divisions in the church. The second one is about sin. The third one is food. Uh, the fourth one is the gathering. And the fifth one will be the resurrection. So each of these days during this week, we're going to be tackling every single one of their issues and, and just talking a little bit about it. The letter to the Corinthian church is very practical. How we apply the gospel of Jesus Christ to every single area of our life. So today we're going to focus on the first issue that the Apostle Paul was dealing with and it was division within the church. And so as I was studying this, uh, this, uh, this book, two things called my attention. The first thing is that was the way that the Apostle Paul addressed the Corinthian church. And we can read that in verse 2. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with those who were in every place, uh, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both the Lord and ours. He called them saints and also extended this letter to every single believer. So that includes you and I. The second thing that caught my attention was that in this letter, even though, even though Paul is going to deal with different issues and sins, he never puts in doubt their salvation. In verse 3 of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, you can read, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's characteristic greeting grace and peace. Most of his letters he addressed that way. And it's because the grace, he, he, it was his source of blessing. And peace is the result in the, month, in, the, in the life of man who accept that grace from God. So from verses 4 to 9, Paul is reminding them of who they are in Christ. Thanking God for them and, and for the grace that, that God has given them. Praising them for the, for the knowledge that God has placed in their lives. And telling them that they have no lack of any gift. Saying to them that He will sustain them uh, guiltless until the day of Christ. And that they were called to fellowship with Christ Jesus. And this, and this word fellowship is kononia, which is communion with Christ. But it seems that they were more occupied with the gifts than with the giver of the gifts. Because of that, they were a carnal church. It's still moved by the desires of their flesh. 
The first issue addressed by Paul was division in the church. In verse 10, it says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it, was, it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. Verse 12. What I mean is that each of you say, I follow Apollo, I follow Paul, and I follow Cephas, which is the Aramaic name of Peter. Or, I follow Christ. Paul, and some of them were saying, I follow Paul because Paul founded this church and he's this cool. And then some other people were saying, I follow Apollo, because it seems like he was a very educated and eloquent speaker and some of them were saying well I follow Peter because was one of the twelve and he spent time, spent time with Jesus he was one of his disciples this sounds familiar right it is happening nowadays because of the internet and people has more access to listen to the many teachers around the world and don't take me wrong there is nothing wrong in doing so. The problem arises when instead of having a relationship with Christ, reading the Bible and spending time in prayer, the believer puts his trust and focus on one person. Paul states in verse 13, Is Christ divided? Did, you die, did I die for you? No. Only Christ died for you, he said. We are only teachers and our call is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, I invite you to examine your heart. How is your relationship with God? How, is there, how, is, how much time are you spending reading and meditating in the Word of God? How much time in prayer? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for what you have spoken to us this morning, Lord. I pray, God, that this word will be planted in the hearts of people, that as we go through the day, that you will be touching our hearts and letting us see in which areas we can improve, Lord. We, we ask for forgiveness for the many times that we have stood you up, Lord, that you're waiting for us to spend time with you and we have chosen to do other things, Lord. I pray, God, that you will move our hearts into prayer, into reading the scripture, God, into growing in relationship with you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, God, in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. So it was... It was fast, it was packed with information. I invite you to, to read the first chapter of 1 Corinthians throughout the day and to examine yourself. And, and, and thanks again for joining us to this morning. And please subscribe to our channel for more faith-enriching videos. Have a blessed day. Bye. Blessings.